Well, good morning. God bless you this morning. God keep you this morning. Thank you for tuning on me once again. Praise God. I'm up. Praise God. I just thank God for waking me up early this morning to share with you all whatever I need to share with you. I mean, I can just be reading and thinking about some thoughts. I'm like, well, I'm always just put it on YouTube. You know, I'm up. Why not? So anyway, I'm gonna get started here. Um, I'm gonna um, read out of uh, James. Let yeah, me read out of James. James chapter two. I mean, it talks about a lot of things in here. So I'm. Uh, it talks about a warning against. Uh, Prejudites. It warned against prejudites. Um, that's what my topic is going to be. Warning about prejudites. But um, it's also talk about faith and do it. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to read about faith and do it first out of James chapter 1, verse 2. It said, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble comes your way, consider it an opportunity, opportunity for great joy. But you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you know, when it's fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty uh, is at and settled as a wave of the sea that is blowing and tossed by the wind. Such people is blowing and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. It says, believe. It says, believers. Believers who are poor have something to boost about, for God has honored them. And those who are rich should boost that God has immunitated them. No, I don't say that. It says, uh, and those who are rich should boost that God has humbled them. It says they will fade away like a little flower in the field. The hot sun rises and grass uh, wither the little flowers droop and fall and its, beautiful, and its beauty fade away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all their achievement. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crowd of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember when he are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempt anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which indicts us, uh, which indicts us and drag us away. The desire gives birth to sinful action. And when sin is all, it says, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. And that's also in the book of Job, chapter 15, verse 35. It says, don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect come down to us. From God, our Father, who created all the light in heaven, he never he never changed or cast in a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, become his pride possession. And um that's also in a book of um um that's also in a book of John chapter 1 verse 13 and um it says here um in verse 19 this talks about listen listening and doing it says understand this my dear brothers and sisters you must all be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to get angry human angry does not 
produce the righteous God desires. So get rid of all the filthy and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your heart for it has the power to save your soul. And that's also in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Verse 22 here says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. That's why I say you have to do, do your do, don't worry about the don't. You have to do what it says, not just listening, not just not reading about it. You know, you have to do, you know, what it says. He said, otherwise you are only fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You know, you're glancing, you know, in the mirror doing all this stuff, you know, glancing. <laughs> uh, where was I? I'm all glancing. Um, it said, you see, it says, you see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that set you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for it. You know, he will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be uh, religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself. And your religion is worthless. Pure, the genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father means caring for offering and windows and their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. And that's also in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. In the next verse, uh, well, chapter 2, which it basically talks about the one against uh, prejudice. This is my topic going to be a warn against prejudice. Prejudice, you know, talks about, you know, basically talks about, you know, how somebody can look so good, clothing real good, I mean, look so nice, you know, and it's like, you know, then somebody come in that's poor and, and don't probably look as good as you, not dressed properly, not, you know, just coming as they are, you know, all tore up from the floor or whatever, and you they come sit by you while you all nice and clean and this you know, dirty person that's not all that nice clothing, don't have the, you know, not so good looking, you know, how, you know, look real poor, come sit next to you or something like that. I'm just making a point, but it's in the Bible. Um, you like, come sit next to you, be like, oh, I don't want to sit next to him, it ain't for me, you know, ugh. you know, you want to move and all this kind of stuff, you know, stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and read it anyway. Um, warned against, for, um, uh, Prejudice, one against prejudice. Uh, verse one, chapter two of James says, "My dear brother and sister, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people? You know, if you favor some people over there, what it says, and it also says, for example, suppose someone comes into your meeting. Well, it says meeting here, but I was making the point. I was just saying, you know, dress coming in, dress nice coming in church, whatever, sitting next to you, something like that. But anyway, it says coming to your meeting, dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry. I mean, jewelry. And another comes in. It says another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor, you know, you say to the poor one, you can't stand over there or else sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motive? And that's also in the book of John, uh, chapter 7, verse 24. I mean, what's in the book is in the world. What they still doing right now today. I mean, somebody could be right there in church, be nice, looking good, smelling good, and somebody... A homeless or whatever poor came in, you know, not dressed properly, not looking good as you, and you want to school over, you might just move. It, it basically, what it's saying, but it's just said meeting, but you know, it could be, you know, church meeting, whatever. But uh, anyway, it said, listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hey, hating, it says, hasn't God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the one who feel inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it, it says, isn't 
it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the one who slandered Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? And that's also in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 21. Verse 8 here it says, Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbors as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all the law except one is, one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's law. For the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. So if you murder someone but do not commit adultery, you have still broken the law. I mean, you're doing one thing, is it one thing you don't do, then you do something else, you're still breaking the law. And God already told you not to do it. Also, that's in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 19. Verse 12 here says, So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judge you. In the next verse, chapter 14, I mean verse 14, it talks about faith without good deed is dead. That's why I would say without faith nothing works, you know. I mean, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it says, faith without good deed is dead. And verse 14 says, what good is dear, brother? It says, what good is it, dear brother and sister, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your action? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye, and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But when you don't give the person any food or clothing, what good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. It's like telling somebody, well, have faith. God will bless you. God will give it to you. You know, study, you doing it yourself, in other words. It says, uh, so you see, faith. It says, so, it says, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough. You less it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. And that's also in the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 26. In uh, verse 18 here it says, Now someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deed. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deed? I will show you my faith by my good deed. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God good for you, even it says, uh, even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish can't you see that faith without good deed is useless? And that's also the book of uh, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. Verse 21 here says, Don't you remember that our ancestors Abraham was shown to be right with God by his action when he offered his son Isaac on the altar, you see his faith and his action work together. His action made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scripture says. Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. That's why you have to do something. You know, you have to do something. You know, somebody said at home, they need water and see, they need some clothing, and you have it. And you say, well, God will bless you. I pray for you. Someday, you know, you'll be all right. You know, have a blessed day, and I hope you enjoy your day. And without you even helping, without you even, you know, giving them food or, or buying them some clothes, giving them some clothes, whatever, shoes, whatever it is, doing something about it. You know, not just talking about it. You have to do it. Just why I would say reading and listening, you got to do it. You have to be doers. You know, praise God. But I'm going to read this last verse. Verse 25, it says, We have the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her action. When she hides those messages and sent them safely away by a different road, just as the body is dead without breath. So also faith is dead without good works.
And that's also in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31. And praise God and God bless you. That's why I would say you have to be doers, 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 doers. You have to do it like, what are you doing? Or you just sit back talking about folks, talking about the poor. You know, you can be so rich, have it going on, talking about everybody. But what are you doing? Are you helping them? You know, you doing something about it. You feel helping provide for them. Or you just in for your own self. Selfishness. You know, and God not looking at the selfishness. He He's looking for some doers. The one that say they got faith. The one that say they love God. When you love God, you keep his commandment. Praise God. But anyway, I'm um, praying for each and every last one. You find out what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through. Um, praying for my own self. Praise God. On jobs and everything. You know, it just be like these people. It's, it's like, and sometimes you can, be, you can be, be doing so good at work or whatever you do. You know, just being around folks. Somebody always have to hate on you. You know, they might not even say nothing. They might pretend like they can smile in front of your face. But behind your back, they can just, sometimes, you know, you can just know and you can just feel these things, you know. And you be like, oh, they be like, you know, hi, hey, how you doing? But, you know, man, you know, you turn your back or whatever, go the way, and then, you know, they saying stuff about you, you might not hear, but you can just tell. They talking about the folks, everybody looking at you would be a different, everybody was speaking, they was happy, they was joy, and then later on down the line, it's like they changes. It's like you done something to them. No, you ain't done it to nobody, you know, just hater. You know, no matter if it's on a job, I mean, it can be your own family hating. You know, I mean, it's no love. You know, just hating on one another. You know, when you have that hate with one another, don't you know? It don't even matter what color you you are. I mean, just hate, hate is hate. You know, it don't even matter who you are. Every day you must be doing something right for somebody to be hating, hating on you. Whether it's your look, whatever, whatever, whatever material thing, whatever you have, just hating. But anyway, I'm gonna pray for those, you know, haters. You know, that's why I be like, you know, I, I thank God for the header because the header just make me stronger. The header just make me get even more and more into the world of God and, and, and do my dues even more. You know, I mean, I just even make the devil even matter. You know, when I do that, devil just get up under my feet behind me. Praise God. You know, I mean, I just do. I mean, the, the shoes. I be like, sometimes, I be like, every time somebody be like hating on me and I know and I can see it, I'm like, wow, double for my trouble, triple my trouble, blessings on the way. You know, I'm doing something great. I'm doing something awesome. And they hate it because, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm doing something good. Praise God. But I God bless the haters. Hallelujah. It's going to keep me even stronger. Keep me even stronger and better. Praise God. Now, I thank you, Jesus. Now, I, I ain't playing. I thank you, Jesus. I just thank my Lord Jesus for him. But at the same time, I got to pray for him and, and still do good like he Treat them how they treat me because I'm I'm better than that. I mean I I mean it is it's a mature a maturity growth. You know, when you see yourself not the way you used to be, because of where if I where I used to be, you know, I would cuss them out, say what I said, you know. <laughs> probably wanna stab them, I probably wanted to shoot them, just stupid stuff, you know, it's like now it's like I just thank God for the shame, you know, I mean if you you see the difference, you know, you ain't going on that level no more the way you used to be. And it's like a like a new you. It's like, no, I ain't know. That little stuff don't even bother me. It, it don't even bother me. You know, because I know my God, he uh, He will fix it. He will work it out. He will move people. He will move people out your way. You know, you may not be, uh, sometimes you might not be asking for, for God to move him out your way. He, he just would do. Because he already see what you're doing. You know, he know who you are. And when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, like, before you know, he'll, he, he'll, even, he'll even move them out your way. I mean, I'm, I tell you, I like, when I used to work at this hotel, I mean, I used to be the, uh, the assistant supervisor, you know, and I'm, you know, caught this girl, you know, not changing the sheets, for instance. Call up, it's called popping sheet, you know, not changing the sheet. And um, I walked by, then I backed up and peeped at it again, then I walked on, because I can tell, you know, I already, I'm already seeing she's not changing the sheet. And later on, I went back to her, you know, and I'm playing it off, you know. Checking the bed, checking the sheet while she was in. I'm like, this sheet's not changed. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I said, no, it's not. I said, no, it's not. Just change the sheet. You know, do the right thing. Do what's right. You know. She said, I do that last. You know. But I said, nothing. Walked away and everything. And um, I'll come back like an hour and a half later. And uh, she said, well, that room is done already. I, you know, and I go back in there. I'm like, no. The sheet's still not changed. Change the sheet, please. And, um. Man, she just had a fit. 
I did, I mean, oh, y'all getting on my nerves. Y'all, this, she just put all, everybody else in it. You know, I'm, I'm the supervisor. I'm on the floor. You know, I asked her what to do. And she just started cussing and going off. And um, the manager, uh, the assistant manager at the time, heard her down the hall. And I guess she was, she, she heard she was saying that. She heard, I'm, I'm trying to tell her, you need to calm down. Calm down before you lose the job. You know, it's not even all, it's all that's not even all that's necessary, and it's not even seriously. Just do what you told. I mean, just do what I asked you to do. You know, I mean, you know, why go off? You know, you ain't changing shit. You know, it was between me and you. I ain't when I'm told him. I ain't told a man do. You know what you're doing, what you're not doing, and just do the right thing. Boy, she got the cussing going me all up down the hall, and I said, boy, I told him like, shh, be quiet, keep the voice down. It don't take all you gonna lose the job. But she just kept on. She I'm like, okay, I, so I went on another way. While she, you know, trying to <laughs> move her car. She was trying to push the car right. She kept on running to the wall with the car. I mean she was she I mean just it wasn't that she let the anger take control control of her. That's why I said, don't let her take control of you because when you find yourself then you had the business being such as somebody get fired, you could you could hold the temper, you know, or something like that. You don't let her take control and you take control of it. And just do what you told, you know. What you asked to do, but I was asking her to do. Boy, she was just had that car. She was just so mad. Couldn't even push the thing right. She was just so mad. Kept on hitting the wall with a bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, I said, I ain't got nothing to say. I mean, I mean, I, already, I seen the manager coming. I'm like, well, I know, I already know. I can I already know she heard. And she got fired. She got the manager fired her right there on the spot. And I said, I told, I told her uh, to calm down. Be quiet. All she had to do is, uh, you know, uh, just change the sheet. You know, so I was just. You know, basically what I told her to do. And, um, you know, so she just got all upset and mad and everything. And she got fired. Well, she could have just changed her sheet and still been there. You know, but she let her anger take control of her. Stuff like that. And, you know, and everybody talking, yeah, he has supervised this and that. I'm like, trying to blame me for her getting fired. Well, she, I mean, it's her fault. You know, she got fired. You know, how people get to start talking. Then, you know, at first they were all happy, happy with you and everything. And then... You know, all of a sudden, you know, it was a change. You know, yeah, she probably got her fire. She probably told her, you know, I'm like talking about me. You know, I told the manager and all that. She was just so loud. Everybody can hear. You know how people just change and everything. But, you know, and the same one that's running their mouth about me, you know, pretending like they all oh, liking me at first and everything. Then it seems something happened to somebody else, and, which probably was their friend, whatever. They want to change. But, you know, I'm like, I, I don't worry about it. I kept on doing my do. I'm going to do, do the job. Do what you're supposed to be doing. Do what I ask you to do. I mean, you know, you need help. I don't mind helping. You know, if you got things to do, I don't mind helping. You got to do, you know, do it sometimes and all the time. And I was, I was, you know, cool with it. You know, cool with supervisor. And they get to talking and all of them. They start trying to give me problems. Like, I ain't worried about my prayer. I'm going to pray for y'all. I can go into another room pray for y'all. You know, I just know that if the room's not done right, you're going to do it over. Because I'm not going to do it for you. But, um, you know, I'm just saying how people is. But, you know, God moved them out the way. I was still there. I mean, God moved everybody out the way, and I was still there. Praise God. They had, they had to you know, hire some more folks. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with it no more. I really, I'm like, I don't have time to deal with people's attitudes. I'm asking them nicely. You know, I mean, they got some supervisors that managed to talk to you the crazy. They got some talk to you like you're a kid. And I wasn't that tight because I know how to talk to people. And um, and they knew this, but they didn't want to do what was right. They thought they, I was going to let them get by us and stuff, you know, because I was, they feel I was too nice, but I'm like, no, to come down to work, I mean, just do what you need to do. You know, sometimes I did it for them. Sometimes, sometimes it'd be like emergency they have to go to. And I did it. I didn't mind doing it if it was emergency. I let them go. Go handle your business, you know. One time the girl, son got shot or got stabbed or something like that. I'm like, go ahead, just go, just go. I said, you ain't got to stop. You ain't got to ask nobody nothing. Just go, go, go to your kid, your son, whatever. Do you got to, I said, I got this. I'll do your room. Just go ahead. And she said, she got on plan. Are you, are you sure? I'm like, I'm sure. I know what I'm doing. Just go. And she, you know, went on. And I took care of the room and everything. And, you know, little stuff like that. I'm just saying, you know, how people, you know, my point was, I was getting that job. People talk, you could tell how people, you know, to pretend, you know, it's all smiling on your face and everything. And how you doing, but behind your back with around other crowd that want to talk about you. And you could just know, or you could just see it. You, maybe you can feel it. But anyway, that's why I say at the same time, you know, God will move them out your way. <laughs> he will move them out your way before you even know it. And all of them would you got to move out the way. Uh, and, you know, some of them got fired, not from me, but, you know, to the other 
my supervisor and the man they got fired. I mean, you know, that they just do what they want to do. And when they had it, the coolest one was me, but they just, you know, whatever. But anyway, I'm afraid of each and every last one of you. I mean, I can just go on and on and tell you about some stuff on the job. I mean, just life period. You know, I'm pretty sure you, you may probably know what I'm saying and you probably been through it and I don't know. But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, people, you know, I was, I'm not a people's pleaser, but I already know how people is, you know, you can be so nice, but people just have their own issue. You know what I mean? People's, people's wild says are different than me because the way I used to be, the world is where I mean, I probably been for a long time ago because, I mean, how they act, I probably wouldn't act, I acting just as ignorant and worse, you know. But I'm like, I just thank God for the change, you know, that he put in me, you know, made me a better person person, you know, I follow so that I got nothing work. You know, I mean, transform my life, trans transform my mind the way I used to be until now. You know, I just thank God for just pray for folks back then. I'm like, I ain't praying for nothing, but I'm gonna pray for my right. I'm put my I'm gonna put my fist, you know, <laughs> upside the head. I'm gonna pray for my right. That's how I used to think. And I just thank God I don't have to go there or say them things no more. I can pray for, you know, I pray for um, sometimes I don't I don't I don't have to tell them that I'm gonna pray for them. I just go I just go go in my little secret place and go do it, you know, because I already know God will move some folks out your way if you believe and have faith in Him. You know, what I mean, if He did it for me once, I know He'll do it for me again. And praise God, God bless you. And he's just saying God will do it for me. He'll do it for you too. Praise God. Heavenly Father, faithful Lord, is watching. God bless you. God keep your prayer, Lord, is be with you, lead you, and guide you, and protect you in every area of your life. I pray, Lord, just keep you strong and. And um, help you whatever situation you need help on. You know, you may need some folks to be moved out your life. Somebody not trying to bless you. Somebody trying to tear you down. I just pray in the name of Jesus. You just ask God to uh, move them people, remove move them people out your way, move the people out your life. The one that's not trying to help you do you no good. Whoever it is, no matter who it is, I just pray no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Because you are somebody in Christ Jesus. And if you're not somebody, I pray you get. To be somebody in Christ Jesus about doing his, doing his will and trusting him and be obedient to him. Because I believe you are somebody. I'm not going to say you're not because you are somebody. Regardless, you know, whether you're a believer or not, you're still somebody. I pray you just do the will of God for your life. And just stay on course and do the right thing. And all that you do in Jesus' name. And I rebuke every sickness and every disease right now. That the Lord will be with you and heal you and touch right where you hurt and touch right where you pain. In Jesus' name, glory be to God, because he's a healer and not a killer. And he wants you healed, and he wants you well. In Jesus' name, I pray. Glory be to God. God bless you, and God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I know I serve an awesome God. He, Yes, he is awesome. Hallelujah. And I just thank the Lord for the change, you know, for me from where I used to be, you know, from where I am now. You know, I just thank God. I mean, you know, he is good. He is, God is good. Even when I'm not so good, God is good. But I try to stay good, stay on that path. You know, he just said it's going to be easy. You know, just keep doing your dues, you know. But he's going to bring you out one way or another. He's going to bring me out one way or another in spite of what I'm going through. Praise God. You know, and I'm praying for each and every last one. Somebody may be looking for work. Somebody may need a job. Somebody probably got laid off or fire. I don't know. I just pray the Lord that just, you know, open the doors for you. You know, when you go on the interview, I pray there be a yes, start right away. But I pray there be a yes that the Lord will put into that person that's going to interview you, or whoever is uh, going to interview you, say yes, and you can start right away. Glory be to God. I pray the Lord to keep the uh, doors open for you. You know, no matter, no matter what it is, interview, whatever. You may need a house, you may need a car, whatever. I pray here, just open that door and make a way out of no way for you to have it. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. May God bless you and God keep you. And remember, God love you, and so do I. You take care. And be blessed. Have a wonderful upcoming week. Glory be to God. Don't let the devil in hell steal joy this week or no week. You know, you just pray. You know, stay focused. Stay on course. Do your dues. You know, don't worry about the don't. Love one another. Treat everyone right. Do your best. He just said it's going to be easy. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, I can tell you, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, I can be like, try, I'm trying, I'm trying, Lord. Help me to keep me together, Lord. Keep me together. You know, well, you should talk to God. You know, ask him to keep you together. You know how you used to be or whatever. Maybe you still live that way. Ask God to help you change you from all that getting quick temper and getting mad so quick or whatever. To punch somebody out or whatever. Or knock somebody out. You know, just ask God to hold your cool. You know, and let him, you know, 
fight your battle. You know, he would just move some people or whatever out your way. You ain't got no way. It don't have to be no fight. God would just move them out the way. Just move them out the way for you. Praise God. But you would just have a better life. Because that's what he want us to have. A better life. A good life. He don't want to be in no drama and all that stupid stuff. We ain't got to uh, fight. We can fight the good fight, all right. Fight the good right. Tell him about the world. Good fight. Tell him about the world of God. And pray for him. That's, that's how I'm going to fight. I'm going to tell him about the world of God. If I don't, if I don't tell him about the world of God, I'm just going to pray for him. You know, God love you. God bless you. You know, I still got to love you. You know I mean? You know, despite what they say, how they look at me, I still got to love you. You know, but like I said, they put their hands on me. I mean, they're going to see another me. Because, like I always say, I'm not Jesus. I am not Jesus. I'm keeping it real. I'm not Jesus. But I'm glad, you know, they ever came to that point. Nobody put their hands on me. But I'm just saying, if you know, it did happen, <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, I got to uh, beat the devil down. That is all, too. I'm going to knock the devil out. <laughs> For real. But uh, I'm, I'm being real. You know, I'm being honest. Because I'm not Jesus, you know. But God, you know, he always fights my battle. He's always, he just come right on time for me. You know, he just moves stuff, people out of my way. I ain't got to go there no more. I just thank God. You know, that's why I hold my peace, you know. And, you know, I might smile on my peace. And be like saying to myself, this day just don't know, boy. If they do it, I if they, they called me some years ago, 10 years ago. You know how I used to be over 10 years ago, boy. It was, I wasn't that nice. <laughs> I wasn't that nice. But anyway, God bless and God keep out of thank God for the change. You know, the change that he put in me. And I know the same God is changing me. The same God will change you if you want to change. Glory be to God. God bless you and God keep you. And remember, God love you. So do I. You have a wonderful upcoming week. Blessed day. And don't forget to thank God for waking you up this morning. Hallelujah. I mean, thank him for everything. Thank him for what you, thank God for what you have. Don't don't worry about what you don't have. Just be thankful for what you do have. You know, glory be to God. Amen. And God bless you and God keep you. Remember, God loves you so do I. You have a wonderful week. And don't let the devil in hell steal your this week or no week. Stay strong. Don't stop. Don't give up. Take care. See you later. You guys say the same.